we are here with another interesting topic. I say this topic is very interesting because it's something that has to do with writing. And when you write, you have the ability to express your deepest feelings, thoughts, or idea. Now, every now and then, as an English student, you have been asked to write letter, you have been asked to write feature stories. We are doing all of this in preparation to your SSCE because there is no external exam you're going to take that will not require you to do a, a, as an, a, a bit of writing before you go into the lexis and structure. Now, today's topic is about speech presentation. What does it take to present speech and what is speech presentation? Now, spirit, speech presentation, I do tell most of my students that is one aspect of English study that is very, very crucial because it is that aspect where you have to exhibit all the grammars you have learned so many years ago in school. Now, speech presentation is simply the act or a piece of writing that about a particular subject matter given to you to be delivered to a group of people. A speech is simply a talk or a piece of writing about a particular subject matter given to you to be delivered to a group of people. Now, who are this group of people? You already know yourself as a writer. Your group, group of people is your audience. Your audience is key because it is when you know your audience, you will know what you, you will talk about. It is when you know the kind of audience you're going to deliver your speech to that you know how you prepare or even make research on a particular uh, topic that has been given to you. Therefore, audience is very key in speech presentation. Now, speech presentation has its own features, just like letter writing. It has its own feature, just like composition writing. We know the features of composition writing. We also know the features of letter writing. Speech presentation has its own features. That's to say that what are those component parts a speech must contain for you to deliver. Now, for you, before you begin to think about delivering your speech, you must have background knowledge of what you're going to talk about. That's to say that your topic, you must be prepared. You must research. You must study your audience very well. What will appeal to your audience? That's because you already know the kind of audience to, you, you have, you're going to have. If they are going to, if they are children, you know what appeal to children. If they are adults, if they are teenagers, if they are parents, you know what should appeal, appeal to each of your audience. Now, the first thing you should look out for is that a good speech must possess the following. And one of the qualities a, a good speech must possess is that it must be very interesting. A speech must be very what interesting. Of course, it should be interesting because it entails your feelings, your idea. Even if a topic has been given to you, you have the opportunity to go and make research so that that so that you can bring your feelings, your deepest thoughts into what you're writing. Now, it must be written in polished English with free error expressions. When I mean polished English, you must write it in such a way that it meets up to standard. The rules of grammar must also be applicable. Now, number three, the me message of the speech must be clearly presented. That's to say that your speech should be organized. You should arrange it in such a manner that one idea should transit into the other idea. There should be connection between your ideas, whatever ideas you want to express, it should be connected. It should not be disorganized. It should be all, all, uh, orderly arranged. Then fourthly, it must have the three essential parts. And what are these three essential parts? Remember, I do tell that if you're writing a letter, you, sh you should think of the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. The introduction is very important because it is the window through which you can which through which you can arrest your audience. The introduction is very, very important. It should be captivating. It should be enticing because it is true in the introduction. You will be willing, your audience will be willing to listen to you. The kind of introduction you give determines how you are going to hold the interest of your listeners or your audience throughout the delivery, speech delivery. Now, the body is where you present all the ideas you want to talk about. The body is, in, is equally important as the introduction because that is where you state all the problems that have been identified. That is where you give your that is where you give all the you give the problem, you also prefer solutions. Then your conclusion should be very brief and concise. You should be able to capture what is said in the introduction and what is also said in the body. Your introduction should be very brief. It should be it should be punchy and catchy. I make use of this expression, catchy and punchy, because 
your audience should have something to take back home. That's they should have something they are, they are going to reflect on. Wow, this speech that was delivered to the did you know the person said this? The person said that. So your, your conclusion should be able to give that. Then here we have sample of the speech. What I mean sample of the speech is that since it's uh, a video thing, there is no way we'll bring speech here, but I want to introduce you to something. Now, assuming you are the senior prefect in your school and you're expected to write a speech for presentation on your PTA meeting, appealing parents to monitor their children with a view to inculcating moral values in them. We know what is happening around the world right now that there's a moral decadence in our society and there is need for parents and everybody to do what? Uh, 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 be involved so that there will be moral values in our society and you have been given that task by your principal to come and deliver speech now these are the likely sample points you're expected to talk about if you are to deliver that speech number one it is called protocol every speech presentation must have protocol here you recognize every dignitaries when i mean protocol protocol simply means respectable dignitaries that are present in that occasion since it is a pta meeting of course you have the pta chairman you have the principal of your school you have your teachers and even your fellow students so you must observe this uh, uh, protocol starting from the top to the bottom now you say the chairman the pta chairman the principal of your school distinguished parents that's ladies and gentlemen that are present and your fellow students you must acknowledge everybody that is present in that meeting then number two you must welcome and greet them here what it means is that you are to welcome them this welcoming give, makes them relax you are telling them that you are aware and it, it's also a sign of respect then number three you should thank them don't just jump into the men issue into the main problem no you must thank them for their previous contribution you must thank the parents for their previous contributions they have done in making sure that the school is developing then number four you must express your deepest appreciation to everybody that is pre present in that meeting by saying that oh we, we know or i know that some of you might have very serious tasks to do, but you abandon all of that to come and pay uh, attention or to come and grace this occasion. I welcome you. I appreciate you. You can use this expressions like this. Then number five, state the need for morals and discipline in the lives of the youth. Now here you're stating the problem. You're stating the problem that you want to present. Here you said you, you, you've already stated the problems. Uh, of how there is serious need for morals and discipline in the lives of the youth. This is where you gradually unfold what you want to talk about. Then number six, you appeal to parents to also work hard to ensure moral and discipline among their children. To tell them that teachers alone cannot do it. Because most times, apart from the number of hours they spend in school, they still go back home. And the, the parents should be a kind of, uh, they, should, they should be able to inculcate discipline so that they can transport that from home to school. So that your school will become a very peaceful environment which will also translate into having good society. Then number seven, having said all this, you need to thank them for their patience. If they have listened to you, of course, some of them might applaud you. You also need to thank them for their patience and contribution to made toward developing your school because no school can actively progress without involving parents. Then, I haven't said that these are the points that you need to take into cognizance if you are to deliver a speech on this, on this particular topic. You need to take cognizance of all of these points that have been laid down. That is why I call it sample points so that with these points, you'll be able to develop or even expatiate it and write and come out with a very beautiful speech on this topic. Thank you. Now, the, the, the second thing I want you to do for me here, having gone through the notes, you've gone through the sample point here as related to the top, topic above. Here is something for you to do. As the senior prefect, as the senior prefect, write a speech to be delivered at your morning assembly on the need for good study habits. As the senior prefect, write a speech to be delivered at your morning assembly on the need for good study habits. Now you are going to face your fellow students. You now know your audience. It does not include your teacher, 
or your parents. So you should know the kind of things you are going to put into this your speech to make it wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.